Hello and welcome to today's workshop. Um, light and shadow play on Groundhog Day. Um, this activity is going to help your students understand um, LED lighting and electricity, um, the um, facts about groundhogs and the legends of Groundhog Day. And then they're gonna do a little experiment um, using light um, and measuring shadows. So cross-curricular learning, um, fun for all ages. It can be adapted from as young as kindergarten all the way up through seventh or eighth grade, depending on how complex. Um, and if you wanna do the entire project or pick and choose different parts of the project. Um, so we'll get started. First, I'm gonna go over what I'm gonna talk about in the workshop. Um, we're gonna start with an introduction, who I am and why I'm here. Um, we'll talk a little bit about why cardboard um, and cardboard construction is great for STEM education for all ages. I'll go over some basic maker materials um, that we supply and that you can find in um, students' home or in your classroom very easily. Um, we'll do some 3D modeling warm-ups and then we'll jump into the Groundhog Project. Um, we'll do circuits for the older students um, and the entire Groundhog Project is good, again, for all ages. And I'll share some extensions that are available on our website, although we probably won't have time to go through all of the extensions right now. Um, so just as a brief introduction, my name is Marcy Klein. I am a pediatrician and was a pediatrician for over 15 years before transitioning into education. Um, my transition was inspired um, by the two cuties on the right. Yes, they are my children. Um, my daughter, Ayanna Klein, and my son, Ethan, started 3 Ducks Design about four years ago after my daughter took an architecture class um, as a high school student and fell in love with how architecture is a great tool for STEAM learning. And um, Ethan, her little brother, was learning CAD and 3D printing at the time. And together, they came up with the 3 Ducks Design. You'll see more of it in a few modeling system, which is basically a series of different angle and shaped connectors that fit on all single ply cardboard. Um, the story went, they took their little prototype 3D printed connectors to the local soccer tournament and some farmers markets, and um, I was there supporting them. And what I saw was pure magic. Um, kids were playing um, and learning, making complex 3D models. Parents were playing with kids and educators were asking for the connectors in the hundreds. And that was really the birth of 3 Ducks Design. And the uh, product itself on the left is basically connectors and um, geometric cardboard shapes. Kids can use them to create simple structures as small as little characters that they can play with to entire communities or inventions and pretty much anything in between. And over the last four years, I've been um, writing content and curriculum to um, make the product more accessible and usable in the classroom. And the Groundhog Day project is one of our more recent ones. Um, so why I love working with cardboard so much, um, the first is absolutely obvious. It's incredibly fun. Kids of all ages from three years old all the way up through actually adults love building and creating with cardboard modeling. Um, the other benefit of cardboard um, is that it's in, in free and it's accessible to everybody and it is ubiquitous. So kids in Kenya are doing the same projects as kids in where we're from, Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, the connectors that we designed fit all cardboard, um, but you can also just use, um, as I'll go over shortly, other materials like tape and glue um, to do cardboard construction as well. Um, the other benefits of working with cardboard is it improves gross motor and fine motor, teaches kids geometry and complex 3D spatial thinking. Um, it's very open-ended and creative, so it fosters those 21st century skills um, of critical problem solving, collaboration, communication, and that's just the beginning of the list. Uh, maker materials, um, we have 
these maker materials in our kits. Um, so we include besides the cardboard and the connectors, lots of other simple maker materials that you would also have easily accessible at school or in your home. Straws, pipe cleaners, we use little metal brads, which make great linkages and also um, levers for, um, for our electricity sets. Um, draft paper, obviously, um, any kind of craft paper, pom-poms um, and assorted toys that you might have in the classroom can be incorporated into 3D modeling with cardboard. And some of our kits, we include LED lights, but I'll go over, um, if you don't have our kits, other materials um, that would work for LED lighting as well. Um, in addition to those maker materials, um, tape, scissors, crayons, um, popsicle sticks, paper towel rolls have lots of great uses in STEM education. Um, any upcycle materials your students have and um, cardboard, um, magazine clippings um, for decorating projects and for inspiration. Um, if you're going to level up your cardboard models, um, you can add electrical circuits. Um, you can even add solar power and wind power projects um, for robotics. You can um, build entire cities and then use your robots to navigate through those cities. Um, MakerBit and um, motors can allow you to actually do some coding with your projects. And you can even um, leverage um, digital literacy so when kids are done doing their projects they can use um, green screen and stop motion and other video technology to create presentations um, also motors i have on this picture um, are great for bringing projects to life some of my favorite resources just quickly um, scrappy circuits is a great um, resource for circuits um, you can basically make a circuit for, I believe, under $2 out of materials you most likely have at home. So that's a really great resource. resource. Um, Carly and Adam have lots of great projects, including um, a Groundhog Day project as well. Um, you can find their work on Teachers Pay Teachers, and the Daily STEM is an amazing resource um, and book if you um, do a lot of STEM education for um, integrating STEM into pretty much every single thing that you experience out in the real world um, can become a STEM activity or a project. So I highly recommend that book. Um, so now to get started on um, a warm-up activity. So if you have a 3 dots design kit, here is a great warm-up activity to get kids used to 3D modeling and also learning their different angles. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And if you um, have a kit, you can play along. If not, you can just um, watch and um, just appreciate the different angles and how we teach them. So in general, we have people start, kids start with um, the, begin, the front of a house. So we call this the front house facade. Actually, mine is sort of upside down, although it's again, completely open-ended. So upside down, it could be a door and a cat port, but it was actually designed as a card to be a window and a door. Um, there is a piece that pops out up here that's the exact same size that you can use as the door, or you can literally take any piece of cardboard and use it. And the way we have students exploring the different angles is we ask students to begin by putting the door on in a way that allows the door to be completely closed using one of three dots connectors. So um, if you're watching along um, this um, 180 degree angle would be the correct one that the student should pick to have the door completely closed. Now, of course it's not because the connector takes up space going to be totally in line um, with the house, but that is easily fixable with a simple pipe cleaner, um, hole puncher. So if you punch a hole on both sides, um, you can actually get the door to fit completely. Um, but for the purposes of this particular lesson, um, we're gonna have students really just focusing on the different angles. So your students should be picking the 180 degree angle, which allows the door to be completely closed. Um, that angle in our kits comes in turquoise and also in orange. 
Um, so once the students have the door completely closed, you're gonna ask your students to find a connector that allows the door to be exactly halfway open um, or exactly halfway closed. Um, so in that case, they're going to be picking a right angle connector. Um, there's a number of different right angle connectors in the kit. Um, this one, I'm just doing the simple L-shaped connector um, on end. It looks like this. Um, on a door, you can see that the door is exactly halfway open and halfway closed. Now, in addition to the L connector, there are a few other connectors that we have that still have right angles. So our four-way connector would still be um, the right connector to have the door halfway open and halfway closed. Um, after the students master that, you're gonna ask them to find a connector that allows the door to be almost completely open, but not completely open. Um, and in that case, they're going to pick the 60 degree angle. It's a green connector. Um, and as you can see here, the door is more open um, than it was with the 90 degree angle, but it's still not completely open. Lastly, the students are going to be asked to find a connector that allows the door to be mostly closed. Um, not completely closed, not halfway open, but mostly closed. And they're going to be picking a 120 degree angle for this project for this part of the project. Um, so once the students get used to the different angles, it's good to really reinforce that. So I'm gonna share my screen again and show you how we do that with the Kuki Casa activity. Um, so in this example, um, after they're done playing with the door, we ask students, hold on, let me make myself a little bit bigger, um, to come up with some, innovation to the front of their house that allows them to use that exact same connector. So I don't have in the picture here, but for the um, 180 degree connector, they might want to put like a sign on top. Maybe it's a store that they designed and maybe they want to put a sign on top of it. Um, so that would be a really good use for a 180 degree angle. As you can see with the green square just to the right of the blue trapezoid, um, you can see the student using a 60, de uh, 60 degree or the acute angle to create a ramp apparently for a pet. Um, the third picture over the blue trapezoid um, using the right angles, they're making stairs for people to step into the home and all the way on the right, the multicolor square, the students are using an obtuse angle to create an awning for shade. Um, your students can come up with a gazillion different um, options for their innovation, but the whole point is for them to learn the angles with the door and then reinforce that learning um, and the application of those different angles in a 3D model by creating these um, little innovations. Um, next up, and on to our light and shadow play on Groundhog Day lesson plan. So here is where you can find all the resources. Um, it's on our webpage. The lesson, um, how you access it, you'll go to learn on the top um, legends and drop down, you'll get lessons for teachers and you can find it there. Um, and I'll just quickly go through what is on that page. See if I can do this. So as you scroll down, you will see um, first um, the different downloads. So there's a facilitator guide, there's a student packet. Um, for older students, third grade and up, if you wanna include the electricity, um, the kids can make their own flashlight or light source, um, that packet explains how. For the younger students, you can really just use a flashlight for the experiment. And over to the right, um, there are templates that you can print so that the students can have decorations. And let's see, uh, moving on, if you go to the video resources over here, there's a three minute introduction about the whole project for students. So if you wanna share it with your students in class, or if you have any remote learners, this is great because 
it goes through the whole project basically in three minutes so that the students can kind of stop it and start if they get lost. Um, this is just one example of how we made our model, but we tell students over and over again, there's a million different ways to create their model. We just give an example so that they have something in case they need a little bit of guidance, but that's, this is the area where they can really bring in their own creativity um, and, and in the innovative concepts into how they want to set up their model. Um, we give you resources for all about groundhogs and the legends of Groundhog Day. Then there's another video on light and shadows. And um, I included in your kits, um, but you can also just use wax paper if you want to go into transparent, translucent, and opaque um, and the effects on light. Um, so that's a really good um, addition to the project. It's optional. So for the younger students, you might not want to include that, but it's there in case you want it. Um, let's see, what else do I have on this? Um, oh yeah, so um, there's printable drafting paper if you want that. Um, so you can print those for each one of your students. And how to submit. This is great. Um, on every one of our lesson plans, we have an option for you to submit your projects to 3 Docs. We love to include them on our website. Any projects, um, photos, or videos can be submitted by just following this. Um, the only thing we ask is that you only submit things that we can share so that we know that whatever you gave us is, is usable um, and able to be shared on social media. And now we're going to get into creating simple circuits. So we have um, students making their own light source for this project. So you can do it a number of different ways in our packet, which I believe I have over here. Um, just an example of what's in our packet. Um, we go over all about electricity um, and different types of circuits. We then go into how to make the flashlight. So your students can follow along in their packet. So you don't really need to teach them, but you can help them through this project if you want. Um, there's all different kinds of ways to make these little flashlights. The most simple and basic one, and I'm going to stop sharing for a moment, is basically using a button battery and using one electrical, uh, I mean, one LED light and just going over the long and the short um, prong, um, how the short is a negative um, anode and the long arm is the cathode. And all the students really need to do is put the button battery in, in the right orientation and tape the whole thing together and they have a flashlight. Um, but, so that's good for younger students if you want them to do that project. Um, you can have them make it. And then we actually had our students decorate it. So they made this little guy. I don't know if he's a groundhog or not, um, but you can see um, just by looking at this guy, um, first of all, the three-way connectors make really great feet for, for the characters to stand up. The 180s make great arms. Um, we wrapped the LED lighting in yarn just to cover up the unsightly um, conductive tape. And we use pipe cleaners. Um, so this is a really fun little cardboard hat. You can use pipe cleaners um, to put them into, whoops, okay, that glue did not work as well. Um, Sorry about him losing his eye here. It looks better that way. Um, but you can use pipe cleaners, thread them through the corrugation to create um, some fun hinges and movable parts on your cardboard. Um, if you're going to be doing circuits, here is an example of a slightly more complex circuit. So we have the negative um, the short arm or the, the anode going straight down. And then we put the bumpy side or the negative side of the lithium battery, again, facing down so that the negative goes to the negative. Then we took the positive arm and we actually bent it. It's a good idea to do one straight and one bent because usually as kids are fumbling with this, they're gonna be twisting and then they're gonna get all confused. So if you bend the positive, um, it just helps kids continuously um, remember which is the right, you know, which is the positive arm. And then we brought the conductive tape down and over the positive, and that allows to, the light to go on. 
in our lesson plan. We do have other stuff. Um, here is, you're not gonna be able to see the inside very well, but hopefully you can see that there is a little metal brad. And we use that metal brad to create um, a switch, an on off switch. So simply by moving the brad up and down, the students can create a switch. Um, just to show you an example, this one is actually using um, a, a AA battery instead of a lithium battery which I tend to like um, for in class, the lithium batteries are great for remote because um, they're pretty much impossible to short circuit. So your kids will not possibly be able to get burnt using um, the lithium battery. So if you have remote learners, um, this might be a better option for them. Um, so that's how you make the light um, source. Um, you can actually use all different colors in your kit. Some of you got different color light sources. All the different light sources will work really well um, to make a shadow in this project. Um, but when you're doing a project, you might not appreciate the shadow quite as much because it's light in the dark. Um, it does work a little bit better. So I'm gonna go back to screen share again. Um, here is another tutorial. So I have um, a an image um, showing how your students can do that. Um, it's in the worksheet, so they can follow along that way as well. Um, here again is the different components of the lesson plan. Um, the last page you can see, um, we have them design how they think they want their light, um, their flashlight to be um, built before they actually go ahead and build it. Um, and then once the students have completed their light source, then it's time for the project itself. Um, all of these um, images and descriptions are on the worksheets and on the web page. So depending on how you're teaching your students, you have resources for both. Um, so basically, your students are going to create, um, and again, I will stop sharing. Um, they're going to create a model. Your kits have smaller squares. I don't think you have the long rectangles, but you're still going to be able to create the same model out of it. And essentially, they're going to create um, a rectangular um, prism. Rectangular structure. I don't know if it's called a prism, but yeah. Anyway, um, they'll have a little groundhog that they can make, and they're going to situate the groundhog um, and stand him up. Um, in the middle of their diorama. We have them decorate it for fun, but obviously that's not absolutely necessary. Things that you'll notice is that there is a window above the groundhog, directly above the groundhog, and um, in front of the groundhog, so that when the students are doing their experiment, they can shine the light from above, from angled above and from directly um, in front of the groundhog. And based on where their light source is, um, as you can imagine, the groundhog's shadow will change. It's probably gonna be really hard for me to show you that on Zoom, um, but you can appreciate how the different distances. The other thing that the students can do is play with um, what happens to the shadow when the light is far away and what happens to the shadow when the light is close to um, the object. The other thing that you're gonna see, um, and your students can download um, the rulers on the website, um, but you could really use any paper ruler. Um, but as you can see, we added a ruler so that they can actually make exact measurements. Um, that's basically um, the diorama of the project. When, um, if your students are gonna also talk about translucent, um, translucent images, um, lighting, Hold on, I can't talk and think at the same time. Let me put this little thing on. Hopefully, no, close enough. We use wax paper. You'll find in your mini kits that I made some wax paper shapes for you. But by covering the front with wax paper and then shining your light, your students are going to be able to experiment with what happens with um, a translucent light transmitting through a translucent surface. And they will be able to collect data on that as well. And I'm gonna go back to screen sharing.
So um, in the top left, you will see um, I have um, part of the student worksheet and you can see that there's um, some um, uh, an Excel, well, it's actually just like a printed out um, data collection sheet, um, but the students can take data on how the shadows are affected by the light in the different positions and if it's going through a translucent sheet. And then there's an opportunity for a few more lines if the students wanted to, um, the difference in the shadow, like the quality and the length of the shadow based on how far or close the light source is. Maybe they wanted to um, observations based on the different types of light that they used or the different colors of light. Um, but there's opportunity for them to kind of create their own little experiment within this project and make their own observations and conclusions. So when your students are done with their project, um, we bring it back around to create some real world application to everything that they just um, experienced and learned. So we go back to Groundhog Day um, and we ask students to do some interpretation um, based on what the groundhog sees um, in terms of the shadow, what they think um, the time of day it might have been or what the weather might have been on that particular day. Um, and then we have them do a creative writing exercise. Um, presentation is really important in all of BDUX projects. So once the students come up with their creative project, um, they have an opportunity to share that with their peers. And that can be through writing, it can be through photography, it can be through using, integrating you know, other types of media and creating a video presentation. Maybe they wanna make a song and do a presentation that way or a poster board. There's really lots of room um, for creative, um, creativity with um, their presentation. Um, here are just some images of the student worksheet, which you'll find on the webpage, but you see there's area for the data collection, um, students explaining their results, and then brainstorming some ideas for their creative component to it. Um, lastly, um, as an optional extension, you guys probably got um, a little um, crystal, plastic crystal in your kits. That doesn't normally come with the three ducks kits, but um, I do have a link to it on the facilitator guide. They're from Amazon. You can get like 300 of them for like, I think it was like $10 or something. Um, but it gives you um, a chance to explore um, bending of light and creating prisms and um, rainbows with that simple addition to the kit. Um, so in both the facilitator guide and the student worksheet are links to some YouTube videos on bending light and creating prisms and rainbows. Um, you will also find on the website lots of fun cardboard hats. So in the PowerPoint presentation, you can actually click on where it says here and see lots of different um, fun and simple ways to hack cardboard construction um, through hinges and I don't know, I have like six or seven different hacks on there. I'm always making up new ones. So you can find those on the website. Um, you can also find our product line on the website. This project was the closest product that we have that's retail available would be the Electricity 101 mini kit, which is um, Pup's House where you can make a dog house, but it's basically essentially the same exact kit minus, um, <coughs> well, plus a little dog, um, but minus the crystal and the translucent paper. Um, on your PowerPoint, um, you'll be able to watch a video. I won't share it now, but it's a three minute video, which is an example of a student project, which includes a lot of different lessons that we have on our website. Um, just some um, briefly go over some other projects that you might enjoy. Um, we have a build a landmark um, activity which talks about culture diversity um, and your own local community. We have a getting down to business project where students explore entrepreneurship, they create a business model and they open up a little business or a miniature business, I should say. 
<clears throat> we have a busy bee and pollinator pathway activity um, where you learn about the bees life cycle, um, pollinators, um, plants, local, local plants in the community and students go on to build an entire um, pollinator pathway. Um, the pictures on the right are actually a student project um, and they submitted it. Um, so we posted it on our website. When you have time, watch the video on that page. It's adorable. Um, the little girl is quite proud of her bee habitat. Um, here is a project that was done in Costa Rica. Um, they did their community build project and they included um, sustainable um, development goals um, with um, waste management in their project. Um, we have a fun with friction project um, where students create a slope and they test different surface materials on the rate of um, a sled sliding down it. This is another project that uses the scientific method and the students actually do an experiment. Um, fun, uh, Modern Zoo, we imagined, is um, a great project for learning simple machines. Each zoo enclosure in this project um, requires the use of a different simple machine. So in the middle, you can see a lever and linkage, uh, but there's um, all the different machines. So you have inclines, you have linkages and levers. We have a wheel and axle um, and a pulley. And I think that's the end of our slideshow. So if you're watching this video, then it's probably not live. Um, but you can always reach us um, if you have other questions through our website, um, www.3duxdesign.com. You can reach out to us um, and um, not only access most of the lessons, but also reach me if you have other questions um, or if you have a great idea for a lesson plan or project. We love to include educators' projects um, as well as students' projects on our site. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it and um, thank you for joining.